Good morning, guys. Today is April 2nd, and it's Friday, which is payday for most of us, guys. Just want to give it to the Lord this morning. The title of today is The Glory That Excels. We're going to be in Acts chapter 9, the verse of the day is 17. So, Acts 9, I'm going to be reading that chapter, and then... I'm going to read a little bit in depth of what's going on there. And then we'll start talking about the verse of the day. Chapter 9 of Acts, Saul's conversion. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. So, the Lord spoke to Saul on the road to Damascus, and the light shined down, and he can't see, eat, or drink now. That was the end of verse 9, 1 through 9 there. I'm going to keep going. Ananias and Saul. Whew. Still waking up. And there was a serene disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said, said unto him, Go thy way, for he is chosen for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, forthwith, and arose with, or and was baptized. So, he was baptized with the Holy Ghost right there. Saul in Damascus, and when he had received me, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, and he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, 
Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name of, in Jerusalem and came hither for the intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is a very, very Christ. Or this is very Christ. The disciples saved Saul from death. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to him, or to kill him. But their laying away was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. So, what we're talking about is just how Saul lost his sight after the Lord told him that he was persecuting him. So he took his sight and he couldn't eat. And they sent Ananias. Well, he talked to Ananias. And Ananias went and spoke to Saul. And he was healed of his sight. And he could eat again. And um, the Holy Ghost was in him. The Holy Spirit. He was baptized by the Holy Spirit. So, I'm going to read in depth here. The narrative returns to Saul or Paul. His anger with Jesus' followers continued unabated to the point that it was threatening to slaughter them. Paul later acknowledged his zeal in persecuting Christians, and this is how he was known by others. That Saul was authorized to travel to Damascus with warrants from the high priest to imprison people of the way. A common name for early Christians. Indicates his high standing among Jewish religious leaders. He planned to bring them back to Jerusalem since this city was the center of Judaism. No doubt thinking he would help half the spread of the Christianity. Saul instead saw a light from heaven that changed his life and eventually world history. It is doubtful that Saul immediately recognized the voice as that of Jesus. His use of the Lord was probably honorific, equivalent to sir. Rather than recognition of divinity, hence the voice said, I am Jesus. The pricks are ox goads, sticks with sharp metal points used to steer stubborn animals which is used in 1 Samuel 13.21 Paul was not told at this point what his mission or purpose was that was reserved for when he encountered Ananias later in the city of Damascus the stepwise introduction to his future kept him from being overwhelmed all at once with the changes Jesus was initiating in his life. And it also allowed the Christians in Damascus to meet and accept the one whom they feared. This is the first of three accounts of Saul's conversion that appear in the book of Acts. Here it appears that Saul's traveling companions heard a noise but did not recognize the words that were spoken. The comments, it seems, were intended only for Saul. We are not told about how Ananias came to be a Christian. A possible scenario is that he or someone he knew had been in Jerusalem at Pentecost to witness the wondrous signs when God sent the Holy Spirit. The pil pilgrims would then have taken their newfound faith back to Damascus, establishing the church that Saul now came to persecute. Ananias' fear of Saul was such that he dared to question God's judgment. Saul's reputation as an enemy of the church was well earned, built as it was on the testimony of many people. God revealed his purpose for Saul to Ananias first. This ensured that Saul would have a support network in place among Christians once he learned of his new purpose in life. Otherwise, imagine Saul coming to Ananias and claiming to be called. Ananias would have scoffed, if he even let Saul close enough to speak. 
The ordering of events in Saul's conversion may have been altered from the standard pattern so that baptism rather than the filling of the Holy Spirit was the final event. The process may have been extended over several days rather than occurring all at once, but the result was the same. Saul became a follower of Jesus Christ. Saul stayed in Damascus for many days, likely becoming oriented to basic Christianity even as he preached Christ. He gave priority to the synagogues throughout his ministry, starting there before being forced to take the message elsewhere. Understandably, the initial response to Saul was skeptical amazement. But as he grew more capable, he confounded unbelieving Jews, proving that Jesus is the Christ apparently. He was able to explain the messianic connections between the OT and Jesus so clearly that the Jews in Damascus could not refute him. Many days pictures saw dutifully preaching Jesus as Messiah for long enough to become the uppermost enemy of the unbelieving Jews in Damascus. He had come to help their struggle against the growing Christian movement, but now he had become the chief because of its growth. Afraid to leave the via of the city gates, Saul escaped in the most undignified but effective manner. He was placed in a large basket and shoved through an opening in the wall. That's pretty much what we're talking about today is how Saul's being converted from a solemn Jew, you know, a Pharisee, to the life that Christ had designed for him. And he had to be able to see. Some of us in life are walking this path and doing things that God doesn't want us to do. But then the, there will be that time in your life where you will see. And we all have experienced it. Some of us haven't. But that weight of sin sometimes pushes us that way. And we're used for God's purpose. And that's the true blessing of this. And this is what, this is what it's about. When Paul received his sight, he received spiritually and insight into the person of Jesus Christ. And the whole of his subsequent life in preaching was nothing but Jesus Christ. I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. No attraction was ever allowed to hold the mind and soul of Paul, save the face of Jesus Christ. We have to learn to maintain an unimpaired state of character up to the last notch revealed in the vision of Jesus Christ. The abiding characteristic of the spiritual man is the interpretation of the Lord Jesus Christ to himself and the interpretation to others of the purposes of God. The one concentrated passion of the life is Jesus Christ. Whenever you meet this note in a man, you feel he is a man after God's own heart. Never allow anything to deflect you from insight into Jesus Christ. It is the test of whether you are spiritual or not. To be unspiritual means that other things have a growing fascination for you. Since my eyes have looked on to Jesus, I've lost sight of all beside, so enchained my spirit's vision, gazing on the crucified. So we, we have to make that choice. We have to make that choice if we're going to give everything to God every single day. For some, it's you're you're putting other things before God, um, or you deny die, deny what what the truth is and what the history is brought forth, which is fine. Sometimes we have to learn in certain ways. Great message. Uh, if Jesus and our our Father can use Saul to change his life from being a Jew over to Christianity for his purpose. What makes you think that he isn't working in your life right now? I hope you take heed in these words and realize that there is 
a Holy Spirit in this world, and you can have it every everywhere you go. If you seek the Lord, you can feel it. I feel him now, or, or whatever the Spirit is, but everywhere you go. You know, this world, like it's talking about against the pricks, this world will prick you, you know, and it will poke you and try to bring you down. But just remember, your sins are forgiven with Jesus when he died on that cross, which we'll be celebrating, which is today. He died on the cross today, Good Friday. Today's the day that the Lord died, cruci was crucified on the cross. But this Sunday is the day he rose again. And that's the true glory. That's that glory that excels. And what he said was true. He, st he, he not just said it. He did it. What he said. Which what he said were things we wouldn't believe as people back then. We'd think you're crazy. And he did all these miracles and all these things. Everything is possible with God. And he says we have that power. The Father. We have that. Just let God lead us everywhere we go. Stand on this foundation. Some of us need to be, you know, given sight again. Like Saul was. But. We also have to listen and do that too. See he could have still turned away. And denied. What was going on. But he. You know. He didn't. And that's the, tr that's the choice you have to make. God bless you all. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Today's good Friday. The good Friday. That's what they call the day. Good Friday, the day that Christ died on the cross for us. April 2nd of 2021. Well, I'm going to get off here, guys. Have a great one.